Friends, I'm Timothy O'Leary, General Director of Washington National Opera, and we are thrilled to announce a landmark season. Thanks to the vision of our artistic director, Francesca Zambello, and a lineup of stellar artists, we will give you four new productions, all of them gorgeous, all boldly advancing our beloved art form of opera. We open with a major world premiere, Janine Tesori's Grounded, a co-production with the Metropolitan Opera, which initiated and commissioned this beautiful, powerful work. Grounded is an adaptation of George Brandt's award-winning play, and it tells the story of an elite female F-16 fighter pilot, one of the best in the Air Force, whose unexpected pregnancy suddenly finds her unable to fly. Singing the role of Jess is one of the most spectacular mezzo-sopranos of today, Emily D'Angelo. So Jess is the central character here in this in this new opera. It's a very um, complicated character who, who goes through a lot. And I, I think that she's actually quite relatable in a lot of ways um, in general. Thanks to WNO's collaboration with the Metropolitan Opera, this production will feature an unprecedented use of the most dazzling stage technology of today. Massive LED screen imagery will envelop the whole Kennedy Center Opera House stage, immersing the audience in the action. We can't wait to share this compelling story with you. Hi, I'm Francesca Zambello, and I am proud to be the artistic director of the Washington National Opera. And in addition to the world premiere of Grounded, we are also presenting traditional works, but with a twist. This season, we're bringing a brand new production of Puccini's powerful Turandot to the stage. This season, we have commissioned a world premiere ending by Grammy award-winning composer Christopher Tin and librettist Susan Sun Hee Stanton. What most people don't realize is that Puccini never finished Turandot and that he died before he could finish the last 20 minutes or so of the opera. And actually, one of his contemporaries, uh, a composer named Franco Alfano stepped in. Even though it sort of stayed as the ending that everyone performs over the last hundred years, it's always felt a little bit incomplete in a way because it doesn't address the, the plot in a satisfactory way. And it actually paints the main female characters sort of in an unsatisfactory light. In this new ending of Turandot, we're hoping to give the Princess Turandot a satisfactory ending to her story. So she's more three-dimensional as a, as a female character. And hopefully by doing so, we can fulfill Puccini's vision the way that he had intended the, the opera to be completed. This season, we also give you a new staging of Gounod's classic version of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet in a new production co-produced with the Glimmerglass Festival. These performances will be a highlight of DC's new Shakespeare Festival in November in partnership with the Shakespeare Theatre Company and its artistic director, Simon Godwin, who directs the production. My vision for the production is very much rooted in Shakespeare. The thing about Shakespeare is that he loves fluidity. He loves scenes melting into others. So my uh, aesthetic for the production is modern dress, which is in itself very Shakespearean since he put all of his plays in the clothes that the audience were wearing. And it's very much uh, built around a moving set of objects. So we're able to hurtle through the story and feel a little bit like we're falling in love with Romeo and Juliet. We're sucked into their vortex of desire, the hurricane of their emotions. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a, a, an exhilarating ride into um, heart, heart, heart-led storytelling. We are also bringing a witty new production of Jacques Offenbach's La Pericole, or Songbird, to the Eisenhower Theater. The setting is New Orleans during Prohibition, and the reconceived work comes to life with conductor James Lau's orchestrations, where big band meets jazz meets opera in Kelly Rourke's new Franglais adaptation. And we are delighted that beloved mezzo-soprano Isabel Leonard will return to the WNO as our own songbird. La Pericole is a great piece. It's not a very well-known or often done piece. Regardless of whether you do it as written, as Offenbach wrote it and in French or in English or in any other language for that matter, the piece itself stands alone. And the piece itself is something that is entertaining and fun and charming and lighthearted. It is not a serious night at the opera. 
It is something that everybody can enjoy. It is something that you can bring, I think, all ages to. Next season sees the return of the holiday opera with a revival of Janine Tesori and Sandy McClatchy's The Lion, the Unicorn, and Me, featuring a singer who is now a global star and is beloved in his hometown of DC, Solomon Howard. The WNO is greatly committed to fostering the next generation of all artists. Our new creative teams of composers and librettists will premiere their 20-minute operas in the 11th season of the American Opera Initiative Program. We'll also feature our next Marian Anderson Vocal Award winner in an annual recital. We are excited about sharing next season with you.